Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. A teenage boy is dead and his mother and sister hospitalized after their house was set on fire in Stewart Town, Mucca Clarendon last night. The boy has been identified as 16-year-old Central High student Leroy Hamilton. TVJ News understands that the family of three was at home when they were attacked. Unfortunately, there was a domestic dispute that ended up with persons, well, one child lost his life. One person was, was chopped, the, the house was burnt, two persons were severely burnt. They are currently being treated at the Maypen Hospital. It's believed that the incident was a result of a domestic dispute. The man, suspected of carrying out the attack, 41-year-old Clayton Lawrence, hung himself. Counselor for the Mucker Division, Romaine Morris, said the incident could have been prevented. We have to ramp up our, our, our efforts now and how we deal with these situations when persons have this level of depression and so forth in our country. Because something like this could have been avoided. The, the young man is just caught up in a situation now that he knows anything about. He had a bright future. I'm sure the school he attends, Central High, I'm sure the teachers and his friends down there, he's going to miss him. The community miss him. The community is grieving for him and his family because he was a promising young man. Uh, we're saying to persons who have uh, domestic issues that they need to seek the intervention of the police. It's always very important that you say something to somebody. Don't assume that um, it's going to just be settled like that. The man charged with the July 10, 2016 murder of a three-year-old in Orange Hill District, Brownstown, St. Anne, pleaded guilty yesterday in the St. Anne Circuit Court. TVJ's O'Shane Masters reports. After over two years in custody, 21-year-old Alexis Newland, otherwise called Daldal, -Dal, pleaded guilty yesterday to three-year-old Nevalicia Campbell's murder. He is to be sentenced on Friday, November 2. It's the case that has sparked shock and outrage. The accused, a resident of Milford in Otrius, St. Anne. The body of his three-year-old victim, Nevalicia, found in the district of Orange Hill with what appeared to be chop wounds on Sunday, July 10, 2016. Police said the girl's mother had reported her daughter had gone missing sometime between the Saturday night and Sunday morning before she was found. According to the mother's report, she had put Nevelisia and her twin brother to bed at 10.30 the Saturday night. About half an hour later, the little girl woke up and asked for water. She later returned to lay on the bed and watch television with her mother. The mother told the police that she woke up about 1.30 the next morning and realized that Nevelicia was missing. The front door, which was not locked with a key, was also open. She reported the three-year-old missing after searching frantically for her daughter without success. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. Bert Samuels, the attorney representing alleged leader of the Klansman gang, Tesha Miller, is to file an application in court today seeking to have him released or charged. Mr. Samuels says he was contracted to represent Mr. Miller during a visit last night. Mr. Miller was previously represented by attorney Christopher Townsend. It's last night, which is Tuesday night, I went to see Mr. Miller. He was detained uh, beyond 24 hours by then. I spoke to him. He has asked me to represent him in court and with regard to his detention. I intend to go to court this morning and he's retained me to go to court to apply for a 286 application rather for the judge to review why he has not been charged. Mr. Miller was held Monday afternoon by a team from Sea Talk at the La Chuchon Plaza in St. Andrew. Another man was also detained. Mr. Samuel says a question and answer session is scheduled for Tesha Miller and the police tomorrow afternoon. We've been making arrangements to do a question and answer with the police with him scheduled for 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And that's where the status of the matter is. The, the Bail Act requires that a person should be charged within 24 hours. So, of course, any law is concerned about that because it has now gone into a breach of the law. 
However, we want to expedite matters as quickly as possible, and that is why we are agreeing to have a question and answer, which is scheduled for tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Despite a state of a public emergency in St. James, there's a call for greater police military presence in a section of Western Jamaica. Member of Parliament for yeah, St. Yeah, James yeah. Southern, Derek Kelly, wants more security personnel in his constituency as he says it's being plagued with gang-related violence. There's a lot of gang-related effort down here and the security forces are trying to manage it. They are having their own challenges but we hope that sooner or later it will be sorted out. In the meantime, Mr. Kelly has said he spoke with the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSIF, to have more social intervention programs in his constituency. JLP Chairman Robert Montague is again blasting the opposition for its challenge to the National Identification and Registration Act. Details in this report. If you have nothing to hide, if you're not a criminal, you have no fear of it. That challenge from Chairman of the Jamaica Labour Party, JLP, Robert Montague. His comments come following the three-day hearing of the case brought by the opposition, People's National Party, PNP, regarding aspects of the National Identification and Registration Act. According to the PNP, various sections of the Act are unconstitutional and violates the rights of citizens of Jamaica. But Mr. Montague has again questioned the rationale behind the PNP's opposition of NIDS. Many Jamaicans go up to the U.S. Embassy and they like, give them fingerprint, two, print, head, print, all kind of print. But when it comes to protect our nation, PNP are telling me about, you know, picking up print. He is adamant that NIDS would be beneficial to the country in the fight against criminality. He pointed to the recent success of capturing the mastermind behind the recent bomb scares in the United States. A man sends some bomb to people and we condemn him. But what happened in less than one week after they found one fingerprint and one of the bombs, they were able to go to them database and identify the man. Yes. And that is why Andrew Holness and the Labour Party is promoting needs. He says all the PNP is doing is criticizing. We're not into the criminality, no. nor the hypocrisy. No. Every time the PNP they open their mouth is hypocrisy. Right. And them have a leader that come in like an iron balloon, no matter what you do with them in Canada. But the concerns of the opposition were also echoed during the hearing of the NIDS challenge. Chief Justice Brian Sykes questioned the reasons for the new identification system when there is no problem with identifying nationals under the current system. Rashid Masters, TVJ News. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has asked for further changes to the bill to amend the Road Traffic Act. Transport Minister Robert Montague says Mr. Holness, who is chairman of the National Road Safety Council, issued the instruction during a cabinet meeting on September 17. Mr. Montague made the disclosure yesterday during a sitting of the House of Representatives, which discussed amendments to the bill approved in the Senate in February. Mr. Montague outlined the proposed changes. Where offenses are captured by electronic means, as may be prescribed, allow the prescribed notice to be issued to the owner of the vehicle as if the owner was the driver of the vehicle at the time of the commission of the offense. However, having been so served with the notice, the owner will not incur any demerit points against his driver's license. The, secondly, the need for persons to have their permit or driver's license in the motor vehicle while driving, which poses a monetary policy for a license penalty for a licensed driver who was unable to immediately produce a driver's license. This provision was re-examined and an amendment is being made to allow for the driver to have in the vehicle such other document constituting evidence thereof as may be prescribed. And a time now for a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In the next edition of the health report, we look at prostate cancer. Still fears, still fears. Right. I think knowledge is improving. I think we've had enough health um, education um, opportunities, whether through the media, through fa um, family doctors, etc. People are more informed now. There is no um, doubt about that. But I still think that there are fears. I think also because perhaps in the early stages of prostate cancer, 
men have no symptoms. That's the health report this evening in primetime news. And now for today's healthy living tip. Eat more fat from plants than from animals. Increase the amount of fruits and vegetables you eat each day. Eat fish and reduce the amount of dairy products you eat each day. And in sports, Jerome Waite will travel with Jamaica's under-20 footballers as head coach when the team leaves this afternoon for the United States to take part in the World Cup qualifiers. Waite, who is the senior team assistant coach, replaces Vassa Reynolds, who resigned last week. Reynolds cited the inability to devote full attention to the program as the reason for his resignation. Director of Football Wendell Downswell will travel as Waite's assistant. And 13 local-based players from the 20 form the 20-man squad. And that's the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.